Welcome to Comics on a Pyre, a channel to have a meaningful conversation over movies, life, books, and shows, and maybe just a spot to spend time BSing over comics. If you like your entertainment with a bit of substance, then you, my vagabond friend, have come to the right tavern. Tether your horse by the post and come right on in and warm yourself by the fire. Tap that subscribe button, and for the next few minutes, my fellow George Carlin reprobate, lend me your ear. <laughs> I keep on thinking to myself, the thought tumbling around in my mind like a handkerchief spinning around in a dryer too long. Does her death have anything to do with me? I sure as hell have made some enemies in my time. This PI work huh, tends to ruffle a few feathers and any one of my past admirers would love to take a shot at me. But not many would dare. According to my reasoning, the next best thing would to be to kill the woman that I once loved. But who would do it? Who would kill this pretty little minx to get back at me? Oh, who am I kidding? Natalia also had plenty of fans, with her being a famous movie actress and all. And her looks didn't help her in narrowing down the list of her admirers. Any one of her star-stuck, crazed fans could have done it. People are sick, you know. The next best thing to dating a star is to get famous to yourself by killing one. Christ, I wasn't ready for this. When Smirnoff called me back in to take a look at the body, my bad week just ended with a bang. And as always, a murder scene would lead from one death to a Rolodex list of suspects. But this one, this one's personal. I loved Natalia for a time. For a brief moment in this old sluice life, I was happy until that cold bitch named Fate intervened. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? Our love was never meant to last. Me a street level low paid investigator and her an aspiring actress. Either way, her death weighs heavy on my conscience. I can't help but to feel somehow responsible for her murder. She didn't deserve this. To die alone, scared to death. Whoever did this to her, I'm going to make sure to make them pay. My way. The black sad way. Welcome my comic fiends to another episode of Comics on the Pyre. Today I will be going over a true masterpiece by the name of Black Sad. It is a comic book album series created by Spanish authors Juan Diaz Canales, who is the writer, and Juanjo Garnido, who is the artist. Right away from the opening pages, before you even know what the story is about, you will be blown away by the artwork. Each panel is fully detailed and looks realistic. No space in the frames are taken for granted. The water paint style really adds a sense of depth to the characters and each environment looks lived in. The choice of muted colors accentuates the comic's overall theme as an old noir detective story. Since those 1940s and 1950s movies were pretty much all done in black and white with a smoggy background anyway. Wahoo's choice of panel angles is another great feature about the artwork. The bird's eye view makes you think that there is an overhead camera hidden and somewhere in the ceiling's fan, observing all the characters below, watching them go about their business with them totally unaware that they are being observed. If you are looking for fine art and comics, trust me, it doesn't get much better than this. The level of attention to detail is overwhelming. Every character in the story feels like they are a genuine real world person, each with their own individual look and personality. Facial expressions are spot on. You at times will forget that you are looking at anthropomorphic characters. The one thing that I did not care for about the comic 
had nothing to do with the plot or the artwork, but the choice of character personifications. And by saying this, let me explain myself. By choosing a theme to make all dogs cops and villains some form of reptile, I feel is a mistake and takes away from the mystery of this story and any future story concerning Black Sad. I will give you an example. Say you read another Black Sad book. From the first page, you see two new characters that you have never seen before. One a hound and the other, let's say a cobra. Before you read any further and are even aware of the story's plot, you can assume with a level of certainty that the cobra is bad and that the hound is good. By associating a character's inner moral traits with their outer animalistic characteristic, right away takes you away from the story's mystery, since you know automatically who the good and the bad guys are simply by their outward appearance. The other reason why this choice of character personification is harmful is because each species of animals is supposed to be, I believe, a particular race in real life. By making all the reptiles bad and all the dogs good, I feel it sends out a bad message to less savvy readers. Subconsciously, the writer is saying all members of a particular race are either good or bad. But most of us readers know in real the world that this simply isn't true. We have good and bad people in every race. I know this might be nitpicking about the writer's choice of character representation, but I feel that this comic is better than average. And my concerns come from a place of love, not hate. I just want it to be the best that it can be overall. As of right now, I've only read the first story somewhere within the shadows and the Black Sad story arcs. And I am truly looking forward to reading many more. The first plot of the first story, it wasn't the greatest. There was no great plot twist that I didn't see coming. And it was particularly due to the comments I mentioned previously. But I am sure each chapter in this character's stories will be a different experience. Well, that's it for now. If you've read Black Sad, drop me a line in the comment section below concerning your thoughts. In the meantime, feel free to visit my comic YouTube channel, Comics on the Pyre, for other videos like this one. Make sure to tap that bell icon before you go. And oh yes, as always, until next time, keep reading my friends.